morning school. So welcome to our 2020 remembrance service, which as is our tradition, we hold on the 11th of November, which used to be, which is known as Armistice Day, when a peace treaty was signed at the end of the First World War between England, Britain, our allies, and Germany. At 11 a.m. on the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918, as is our tradition, we will hold a two-minute silence at 11 a.m. to remember the people who died in the wars. And at Reed School, this is particularly significant as the two world wars played a big role in the life of the school. And 50 pupils from the school lost their lives with a further pupil being killed in action in Northern Ireland. This is an unusual service today. Outside in the quad, rather than in Drax Church, and many services around the country were cancelled, but we wanted to find a different way to hold ours. So you might feel cold, it might even rain, but we hope not, but I ask you to pay attention and to concentrate on what Remembrance Day is all about paying our respects to all those who served in the war and who paid with their lives so that we could enjoy the freedom that we take for granted every day. Let's please bow our heads in a prayer for Remembrance Day. For those who were killed in battle, for those who gave up their lives to save others, for those who fought because they were forced to. For those who died standing up for a just cause. For those who said that war was wrong. For those who tried to make the peace. For those who prayed when others had no time to pray. For all of mankind, let us quietly pray. May your God hold them in peace. May love flow over the earth and cleanse us all, this day and for always. Amen.
Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born, and a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to forbear. A time for war and a time for peace. Could I ask you please to all stand? Let's all say together the words of remembrance in our order of service. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war, those who we knew and whose memory we treasure, and all who have lived and died in the service of mankind. I'm going to ask Patrick Kelly, our head boy, to please come and read the Roll of Honour. Nineteen fourteen, nineteen eighteen. C. Bland. W. Dilcock. G. H. Fish. N. Fish. W. Head. W. E. A. C. Hayward. J. B. Hutchinson. W. G. Bleakley. T. E. Smith. W. H. P. Spencer. P. Stones. L. C. Turton. C. J. Wright. 1939 to 1945. Kenneth Abbott. George Adams. Dennis Edwards Adiman. George Albert Anson. Roy Marston Bogey. Henry Vivian Braithwaite, James Richard Burton, Brian Maurice Casson, Edward Francis Cryer, Derek Webster Eden, Henry Graham Eden, George Edward Elwood, Frederick Harry Greener, Sidney Donald Harrison, George Hyde, Carlton Curtis Holmes, Sidney Huntington, David Jackson, Leonard Arthur Jeffries, Dennis Labrack, Charles William Mackenzie, David McGill, Keith Madgwick, Edward Melville Mould, Douglas Phillips, Raymond Stewart Pickard, Robert Thomas Pearson, Joseph Thomas Plant, Gordon Smith, Frederick Allen Spencer, George Bowman Stewart, Herbert Harry Stott, Owen Dixon Thomas, William Cliff Verley, Brian Buckley Ward, Lindley Morley Wishart, John Stewart Wood, 1984, Northern Ireland, Timothy Peter Utteridge.
They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Good morning. And how sad I am not to be able to join the Reed School Remembrance Service in person today. This year has been very tough, with the many restrictions, challenges and terrible times that COVID-19 pandemic has brought. How frustrating it is that we are not able to enjoy all our usual social contacts and exchanges and are limited in our sporting and other group activities. It is, however, quite remarkable how well you and the whole Reed School community are coping with all the daily disrupt disruptions and protective arrangements. Hopefully, the promises of emerging vaccines and other protective measures will help us through the months ahead and we can soon start to look forward to a better year in 2021. You should all be very proud of how you have coped with the many new ways of doing things and have embraced different ways of learning and keeping yourselves and your friends and families as safe as possible. Defeating the virus will come from a massive team and community effort not usually seen except in times of war. Thinking about the global pandemic has made me reflect on how the earlier generations coped with the extraordinary difficulties and far greater restrictions and challenges that the two world wars brought. Great sacrifices were made by individuals and by communities as a whole and on a global basis. And these were much greater than anything we have so far experienced with COVID-19. The wearing of gas masks, the blackouts, using air raid shelters and rationing were important things they had to cope with, but the mobilisation of the armed services and civilian populations uh, in so many important jobs to fight the war while sustaining the industry and country with production of food, materials and arms to support the war effort represented a massive disruption to normal life for everyone and for many years. In the First World War, local communities often saw many of their young men volunteering at the same time for armed service. And the PALS brigades were a good example of how these brave recruits went off to war in the same fighting units. This meant that in the dreadful battles of that conflict, during which so many lost their lives in trench warfare, local communities could be decimated by terrible losses of so many of their most promising young people, and very often with it happening on the same day. In the Second World War, many of the Drax old boys who were on our roll of honour volunteered for service in the Royal Air Force. Of those of them who died during the war, the average age was 21 for fighter pilots and just a little older for the bomber crews. The bomber crews suffered great losses. And here are the details of one of them. Raymond Stuart Picard was born on the 13th of April, 1921. His parents 
were Herbert and Victoria Pickard of 1 Beech Grove, Selby. Raymond attended our school from September 1932 until he was approaching his 18th birthday in 1938. He joined the Royal Air Force and became a sergeant pilot in 218 Squadron Bomber Command. He was based at RAF Down and Market and flew a Stirling aircraft BF 578. On the 30th of July 1943, he was flying BF 578 on a mission over Germany, and his was one of two aircraft from his squadron which failed to return that night. BF 578 was brought down by flak and night fighters, killing Sergeant Picard and one of his gunners with the rest of its crew taken prisoner. He was 22 years old and was buried in the Becklingen War Cemetery in Germany. Raymond was just one of many such young men who had only just left school and were full of hope for their futures but for whom the world wars changed everything. They bravely embraced all the changes and challenges of war and laid down their lives for the freedoms we enjoy today. And we will remember them.
morning. I'm sorry not to be here with you in church together for our remembrance service, but look forward to joining you up at Reed School this year. The church is such a lovely place to come to remember those we've lost. And many people come here to light candles. I wonder if there's anybody that you've lost recently that you would like to say thank you for this morning. It's hard for us to imagine what our forefathers went through when it came to the Second World War. But today, in 2020, we particularly remember the anniversary of 1945, the end of the Second World War. If it wasn't for the sacrifices people made, we literally would not be here today. My grandfather escaped from Finland in 1939 on a cargo ship to America, having been doing some undercover work for the British Army. If he hadn't got on that boat, I literally would not have been here because he would not have made it home. And there's some really exciting stories from the war, aren't there, like that. But it's easy also to forget the devastation, the houses that were destroyed in the Blitz and the rebuilding that had to happen in 1945. And I think for all of us next year, it's going to be a bit like that as we rebuild from coronavirus and all the restrictions that we've had to face this year. But I know we can do it, and I know the country will get there in the end. But um, it is very difficult at the moment not to be together. I hope you enjoy the rest of the service, and I will be with you in spirit. Amen. So as we remember today, those who lost their, arm, their lives, not their arms, in um, armed conflicts, we are not alone. As others gather around the country today to mark this occasion with a two minute silence. We are however not together as we normally would be. We haven't got our parents here, or the old Jacksonians. In 1945 the country was also not together as normal, because families were blown apart by war. Some people went to prisoner of war camps and came home very different people. Children had to move out of the big cities to live in the countryside and perhaps were scared of what they would find when they went home. And people got stuck in far flung places waiting to get home. And men from America, Canada, Poland and the Commonwealth served in the World War II as part of the Allies and then started new lives in the UK afterwards to help us rebuild our broken communities. So it was an unstable time, but one that led to great change. For example, our NHS and welfare system was created, and it was the beginning of a much more multicultural Britain. And as we face uncertain times today, we may be separated due to COVID from our loved ones. But we do have peace in this country. In some parts of the world today, despite the pandemic, wars are still going on. And the peacekeeping forces are still deployed. So today is a time to count our blessings. You'll be relieved to hear I think I've only got four. Number one, to say thank you for the freedoms that we have, to rejoice that we have that peace in our time. Number two, to remember our family members, our friends and schoolmates who have fought so we can experience peace. Number three, to know that we are supported and loved by the best peacekeeper in the world, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And that's whether we acknowledge or recognise him at all. But number four, if we turn towards Jesus in our prayers, we can expect to enjoy a lasting sense of peace and calm in our lives in the midst of all the upheaval that surrounds us in 2020 today. So I have a prayer for us. First of all, I'd like you to rub your palms together and then hold them face up. Almighty God, Stretch forth your mighty arm to strengthen and protect the armed forces. 
Grant that meeting danger with courage, and all occasions with discipline and loyalty, they may truly serve the cause of justice and peace. To the honour of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then you might want to rub your hands together again if you're a little bit cold. And then put it on your heart. Like that. And the prayer is, we are not people of fear. We are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God. Giving and loving wherever we are and whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, and wherever you call us. Amen. If you find on the sheet, the words of the Lord's Prayer will be printed, so we can join in the prayer that Jesus taught us when his disciples asked him how they should pray. So we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.